In Jesus' name. Rise up upon your feet and tell the Lord that you want to be perfected. You want to be perfected. God, open my ears to hear. I want to be made perfect in my ways. I want to make it to heaven. Jesus' name we pray. Almighty Father, we are grateful because you are giving us the word of knowledge, the word of understanding, and the word of wisdom. It is also the word of power. Father, the word of holiness. We are praying that your children will be attentive to this world and they will practice it. You will give them grace to be perfect. In Jesus name we pray. Give the flow of your world. I bless you for answering. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. I'm talking to you on living in love among brethren. Living in love among brethren. Amen. In the book of First John, chapter four, verse seven and eight. Beloved. Let us love one another. For love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God because God is love, for God is love. What makes heaven beautiful is not the property of heaven. It's not the buildings, the mansions of heaven. It is the love of God that is spread abroad in heaven. It is the love of God that sinks into the very cells of the occupants of heaven. 
they feel very happy. They are excited. They are happy. What makes a little child rejoice and start laughing as the mother throws it up in a play is not the food that is available. It's not even conscious about the food. It's not anything but the excitement of the love of the mother. So as the mother is playing with the child, the child is just laughing. There is joy in the heart because I am loved. What makes people very happy in the church is love. When they come to the church, they see smiles in the faces of people towards them. They see love, good, uh, good relationship from brethren, friends, and those that love them. That makes them want to go to church because they will find lovers there. It makes everything is fine. And the word they're going to hear is the word of love. Even if it is a hard word, they see love inside. They are happy. What makes the family a happy place is love. Love. When there's love in the family, the people feel happy. I'm going home. My brother is coming. My sister is coming. Or oh, I'm going to see my people. It is the love the family members show one to another. What makes, the, makes us happy before God is, is his love. God loves, for God is love. He is a bundle of love. Everybody sings, I know he loves me better. Whatsoever may be, I will follow him. Each one of the billions of people on earth can sing this song well because they see God loving them. Even the animals, the birds, and the beasts of the field that may not really have a sense feel still happy. The birds jumping upon the branches because there's excitement of love which is from the creator over them. What makes the pastor a good person is love. When you come before the pastor, he has a word for you. He has a smile to give you. He's ready to go into a conversation with you. He's ready to pray for you passionately. He's ready to counsel you, wishing how you get the best for yourself. That makes the pastor a good and loving person. What makes a father a good person to children, a mother a good person to children, is love. Love. The children know the love of the mother. You remember the mother sang the song, Sweet Mother. I don't forget what you have done for me. Sweet father, why is love? What will make you a blessing to humanity is love. That you love people. You are cheerful before people. You are happy. You are interested in people. 
that makes you a blessing that when somebody comes before you he feels at peace that's what makes people love and my friends is the love they will receive from the friend i have this problem i know if i share it with my friend i have a word of comfort i will in fact he will take the matter as if it is his own so you can see the place of love living in love among brethren is saying live in love in the church live in love in the society live in love in your workplace in this scripture where we read let us love one another for love is of god we who are of god should learn to love one another love one another love one another we are children of god let us love one another that's what the scripture is bringing to us love one another he that loveth is born of god has the nature of god he that does not love has no nature of god hence does not know him is not of god so to show you are of god love learn to love people let me tell you something about love a smiling face is a display and a communication of love when you smile towards a person you drive away fear from his heart because love casts out fear a smiling face a laughing mouth is a communication of love i'm saying this because there's some of you you sit among your brethren some things are being said exciting people to laugh you don't laugh you are there as if you're angry as if you're not interested in what is going on everybody laughs and rejoices but when they come to you they see a hardened face they see an angry face why learn to love because that is a communication of love yes love gives we shall see that love gives so learn to give it is a sign that you have love you give people or we'll see that in christ love does good works for others now in john chapter 3 i read verse 16 john 3 16 for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son for god so loved the world that he gave love give a very good property of love is given is given demonstrated by God by giving his son and Jesus also demonstrated this love by giving his life greater love has no man than this that a man should lay down his life for his friends a man should give his life for the son of man is come that he might give his life for the ransom of many so love give so learn how to do it money time property whatever love gives yes 
Husbands and wives, what makes the marriage a haven on earth is not the money you have. It's not the house you live in. It's not even the type of bed you sleep on. It's not the balanced diet you eat, but it's love. Let the man give the wife beautiful love. Pouring this property of love upon his wife, the wife is already in heaven on earth. Let the wife show the husband love. Pouring this property of love, smile, laughter, play, whatever you see, the man is peaceful and happy. The man is at rest. So, let's love one another. And the Bible says, let all your things be done with charity. Your relationship, your interaction, your communication, your all should carry love with it. Let all your things, all, be done with charity. In John chapter 13, verse 34, and 35 John 13 34 and 35 a new commandment I give unto you that ye love one another as I have loved you that ye also love one another by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if ye have love one to another a new commandment is it really new it had been there because John said the new commandment is the old commandment that has been there from the beginning but written and expressed love love it is renewed before you now you want revival of your life you want spiritual freshness. You want to get ready for heaven. You want to be fit for heaven. Have fervent charity in your heart. And start living a life of love. For love shall defeat a, the multitude of sins. Love shall cover the multitude of sin of sins love will bring you to perfection you want to go to heaven you want revival think towards this now begin a life of love as if it is a new commandment you are receiving now that okay i am going to practice love towards my brother i am going to practice love towards my sister remember for god so loved the world in romans chapter 5 romans chapter 5 in verse 8 but god commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Get this. God commended his love towards us. That while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God's love to us, towards us, was even when we were sinners which means god loves sinners which means you should love sinners yes you should love sinners the sinners around you need love 
It is love that will show that you are of Christ. That will show that you are of the light. In the church, we may not have all people righteous. Perfect. You may still have people with some faults in their life. Don't run away from them. Don't criticize them. Don't reject them. Show them love. But their ways are not perfect. But they are offensive. Or they are, in fact, they are evil people. God commended his love towards us. That while we were evil people, he loved us. We were evil people. We were wicked people. But he loved us. So you have no excuse to say, this person is a wicked person. This person is an evil person. No. Love such person. There are people who run away. They say, ah, this person is a witch. This person is a wizard. I don't want to come closer. Why don't you want to come closer? Ah, I don't want him to harm me. I don't want her to harm you. It's because you have not known the property of love. The lover is the winner. The lover is the overcomer. Yes. When you begin to run away, is it not fear? Is it not fear? He that feareth is not made perfect in love. He that feareth has no faith in God. But what about love? When your enemies, your enemy hunger, give him to eat. If he tears, give him to drink. By so doing, ye shall heap the coals of fire upon him. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with what? With love. If you want to win over the devil, win over your, your enemies, show them love. There are people who don't relate in love with their family members, even with their mothers, with their fathers. Why? No, they are witches and wizards. No, I won't go home. I won't send anything. If you send money to them, they will carry the money to the herbalist and they will harm you. Where did you get that gospel from? Gospel according to Satan. Don't you know that when you give a thing demonstrating this love, you have overcome? That love gives you victory? Please, don't follow that gospel. It's a lie. It's not the gospel according to God, but according to Satan that doesn't want you to do good to people. Some even to give to these poor people on the roadside. Beggars on the street, they say, no, 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 no. These beggars, they will carry the money to Abelis. Don't do that. The Bible commands you to give to the poor. I don't mean you should just carry money and be distributing to beggars, but there are people the Lord will impress you to give them something. There are people, the Holy Spirit, because they're creatures of God. And he's also impressing you to do so because he wants you to win over Satan. He wants your good works to multiply so that he can bless you. Don't listen to the devil. Live in love. Let's say this. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. He that loveth is born of God. And knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God. For God is love. From today, put on the uniform of love. I will 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 love Jesus people. I will love everybody. Jesus said. I should love everyone. We should love. We should love. I 
I say you should love, love and love and love. You must love Jesus people, everybody. Jesus say I should love everyone. With this, walk on that bitterness that is in your heart towards your brother. Get it out and go the way of love. Walk on that bitterness that is in your heart towards your sister and go the way of love. That is what God wants. And this is a great revival. Great revival that you have been looking for to love one another. Now, we want to read the book of Ruth, chapter 2. The language of love. Ruth, chapter 2, verse 4. The Bible tells us there. And behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said unto the reapers, the Lord be with you. What was their own answer? And they answered him, The Lord bless thee. Language of love. Can you see? He is the leader, the master. And people were walking on his farm. Others will come and say nothing and carry a heavy face. They will just, who put this in here? Oh, this one is not done. Please say, hey, hey, come here, come here, come here. But Boaz came with the language of love. Learn to speak the language of love in your house. Fill that house with the language of love. You and your wife, you and your husband, you and the children. Speak the language of love. Please, in the church, speak the language of love. If you look at Boaz here, you will see a man filled with the language of love. The Lord be with you. Thank God the people learned from, his, from him. They also said, the Lord bless you. Wonderful. That, let it be like that. In the church, pastor, Learn to speak the language of love to your members. It will, be, it will be fine. Sister, the Lord be with you. Oh, the Lord will do it. Yes, pastor, I believe God. Thank you, pastor. God bless you. That's how life should go. This long face that we are putting on as if we are members of the Sanhedrin that are looking for trouble. We are looking for people to persecute. See the language of love. Now, uh, verse 5, Then said Boaz unto his servant that was set over the, the reapers, Whose damsel is this? And the servant that was set over the reapers answered and said, It is the Moabitish. My British damsel that came back with Naomi out of the country of Moab. And she said, I pray you, let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. So she came and had continued even from the morning until now that she tarried a little in the house. Then Boaz said unto Ruth, language of love. Please, my brethren, especially you who are leaders, Make the church a peaceful place. <laughs> in, in America, among the whites there, if a policeman is arresting a man and want to put anchor upon the man, hello, corporate, and will be rubbing his back, yes, corporate, with a smile. 
and he's putting chain on that man. I say, corporate, yes, how are you feeling? How do you feel? <laughs> and he's taking a criminal to the police station. Corporate, with a smile. Although these not, may not be born again, it's a practice. They have taught them to put, put on a smile, speak gently, even with criminals. See the language of love. And the Boaz said unto Ruth, Hearest thou not my daughter? Go not to glean in another field, neither go from hence, but abide here fast by my maidens. Let thine eyes be on the field that they do reap, and go thou after them. Have I not charged the young men that they shall not touch thee? And when thou art a test, go unto the vessels and drink of that which the young men have drawn. Language of love. What a favor. Speaking favorably. And he's seeing her for the first time. He's seeing her for the first time. Somebody told me among the military or maybe security security men when they see a man they, he is a suspect until he proves that he is not a suspect they look at him with tough face speak to him with rough language to see how he will behave that is for military security people but for we who are christians although we see him for the first time speak with language of love put on a smiling face because he might have run away from some tough circumstance and is coming to us he might have heard that we could do this we could do that that's why he came if he comes to see a tough face he may just turn back i say this is it's not what i had so and then Ruth to see the language of, of love in Ruth. Then she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground. Actions of love. And said unto him, Why have I found grace in thine eyes? That thou shouldest take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger. And Boaz answered and said unto her, It had fully been shot me. All that thou hast done, done unto thy mother-in-law since the date of thine husband and how thou hast left thy father and thy mother and the land of thy nativity and had come unto a people which thou knowest not heretofore heretofore the lord recompense thy work and a full reward be given thee of the lord god of israel under whose wings thou art come to trust then she said, Let me find favor in thy sight, my Lord, for thou hast comforted me with your language of love, and for that thou hast spoken friendly unto thy handmaid, though I be not like unto one of thine handmaid. Can you see that? And see another action of love. Verse 14, And Boaz said unto her, At, mid, at meal time, come thou hither, and eat of the bread, and dip thy morsel in the vinegar. And she sat, she sat beside the reapers, and he reached her parched corn, and she did eat, and was sufficed, and left. No thought of anything, marriage, immorality, anything a lover dealing with a woman he came across for the first time oh i have heard about you i see the way if you were there listening to conversation between boas and Ruth, how will you feel the atmosphere will be good to you please let your conversations be in love let your things be done in love that's what God wants us to know. Yes. We want to talk about your words. 
should be seasoned with salt. Your words should be seasoned with salt. In Colossians chapter 4, verse 6. Colossians chapter 4, verse 6. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. Let your words be always with grace. Some of you learn from unbelieving people. They speak rough and still say they are playing. They speak rough. Hey, look at your face like a monkey. And they laugh. It puts off some people. It puts off some people. Although you're laughing. That's what happens among the unbelievers. And they face many disappointments. Many women have been abandoned for marriage because when they were talking to their suitor, they speak rough language. And think that, ah, you are supposed to know that I'm playing now. No. Bible says, it is like a man that comes among us and throws fire to the air, a call of fire up, and it is falling among the people. It is laughing. I'm playing. I am playing. <laughs> Is he playing? It must be a madman playing like that. Can you see? Oh, you just carry a stone and throw a stone. Everybody's jumping. You're laughing. I'm playing. I'm playing. It's you who speak rough language and say you are playing. You speak coarse words, hard words, and say you are playing. It will quench love. It will pull people away from you. Be careful. Let your activity, your words, be seasoned with salt that is fine. Even if you have a reproof to give, put the reproof in a way the waste can be received. Put the reproof in a way the waste can be received. So that is what the Bible is telling us. And learn this. This should be between husband and wife. Wives learn to speak sweet language at home between mothers and children. Fathers speak good language at home. In Proverbs chapter 31, Proverbs chapter 31 verse 26, The Bible says, Proverbs 31, verse 26, it says, She opened her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. When you are speaking to your husband, do you show, do you try to speak words of wisdom? Do you apply wisdom? Do you? Do you apply wisdom in your communication with your husband? The Bible spoke of Abigail. She knew the time she would not speak to her husband. Nabal. This is not the time to speak to my husband. She knew it. She opened her mouth. Applying wisdom. And when it was time now to speak, she knew the words she would select. 
Why do you speak anyhow to your husband? To the point that your husband knew that you have no respect for him. There's no respect. This woman does not have my respect. Are you not affecting yourself? If you dirty the water, which one will you drink? What about speaking to your children? In her tongue is the law of kindness. Do you speak kind words with your children? Or you command them, come here. S sit down. Go, go, go. Go and dress the fire. Go and dress the fire. You hear? Move now, move. Go and get dress the fire. And if children see a bullying woman who does not put on smile on her face, all message is on fire. They always tremble before their mother. They are never friends. The mother is not happy. Before, when a child comes before you, as you call the child, the first thing you did is to wear another face and make your, heart, your face tough before you start dealing with the children. You are threatening those children and you are putting a strange spirit in them. That's why you must be wise. This thing you are doing today is going with those children. It will affect them in their relationship with you tomorrow. When they graduate from you, they will be going out of Babylon happily with a joy of singing, with a voice of singing and rejoicing to graduate from their mother. Don't do that. Learn to be gentle in the face. Learn to be calm in the face. Learn to, learn to laugh. Learn to smile. Learn to respect the children. Learn to appreciate them. What about the mother, the father? How do you treat your wife? Oh, I think this looks worse. Because there are people who don't talk with their wives at all. You are not my mate. To sit down and be talking with a woman. I don't have a job to do. No, you are bringing tradition into this business. It's tradition. You are bringing tradition of, from the village. It, in the 19, in the 19, oh, is it 19 or 18 or 16th century, or in the 12th century, the dark age, that's how they were dealing with their wives. We are in the enlightened state. When you were in sin, you could do so with your wife. But now, you are even in Christ. Why are you employing, employing the hard character of sinners upon your face towards your wife? And speaking the same language. If you want to speak to your wife, the first thing you do is, is like a dog. Uh -uh. <laughs> Why are you doing that? You have to put on a tough face to speak to your wife? Please, I beg you in Jesus' name, don't do so to your wife. Don't do so to your children. Be kind to them. Be wise to them. Because whatever you sow, you will reap. Whatever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So, in the family, let the language be of love. Children, speak to your father in love. Speak to your mother in love. See me correcting your father and your mother so that you can enjoy their love. Because some of these you also, some of these parents, when the children come before them, they are shaking. Because what will come out of them is not clear. How they will behave is not clear. So the child, the child is shaking, shaking inside. I pray that 
you will deliver your children by changing your character, your nature in Jesus' name. Then, again, master and servants. I've talked about husband and wife, parents and children, master and servants. Yes, you have to deal happily with those under you. In the book of First Kings, chapter 12 1st Kings chapter 12 from verse 1 yes let's read and the help boy went to shake him for all Israel came were come to shake him to make him king. And it came to pass when Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who was yet in Egypt, heard of it, for he was fled from the presence of King Solomon. And Jeroboam dwelt in Egypt, that they sent and called him. And Jeroboam and all the congregation of Israel came and spake unto Rehoboam, saying, Thy father made our your grievous. Now therefore, Make thou the grievous service of thy father, and his heavy yoke which he put upon us lighter, and we will serve you. And he said unto them, Depart yet for three days, then come again to me. And the people departed. And King Rehoboam consulted with the old men that stood before Solomon his father, while he yet lived, and said, how do ye advise that I may answer these people? And they spake unto him, saying, If thou wilt be a servant unto these people this day, and would serve them, and answer them, and speak good words to them, then they will be thy servant forever. But he forsook the counsel of the old men which they had given him, and consulted with the young men that were grown up with him, uh, and which stood before him. And he said unto them, What counsel give ye that we may answer these people, who have spoken to me, saying, Make the yoke which thy father did put upon us lighter. And the young men that were grown up with him spake unto him, saying, Thus shalt thou speak unto these people. That speak unto thee, saying, Thy father made our yoke heavy, and make thou it lighter unto us. Thus shalt thou say unto them, My little finger shall be thicker than my father's loins. And now, whereas thy father did, my father did bait you with a heavy yoke, I will add to your yoke. My father had chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. So, Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam the third day, as the king had appointed, saying, Come to me again the third day. And the king answered the people roughly, and spoke the old, and forsook the old man's counsel that they gave him, and spake to them, after the counsel of the young men, saying, My father made your yoke heavy, and I will add to your yoke. My father also chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. Wherefore, the king hearkened not unto the people, for the cause was from the Lord, that he might perform his saying, which the Lord spake by Ahijah, the Shilonite, unto Jeroboam, the son of Nebal. So, when all Israel saw that the king hearkened not unto them, the people answered the king, saying, What portion have we in David? Neither have we inheritance in the son of Jesse. To your tents, O Israel. Now, see to thine own house, David. So Israel departed unto their tents. He lost them throughout his regime. He lost them. This was the beginning of the division of Israel into two nations. Can you see that? 
He came as a king and succeeded Solomon. And because Solomon was a man of looking for beauty, looking for magnificence, looking for this, he was always taxing the people, pay this, do this, pay this, do this, do this, to build these things that were delightful to his eyes. The people never rested. So when Solomon died and Rehoboam took over, the people came to Rehoboam. Reduce this thing your father was doing. Whatever thing he saw, he wanted to do it. So that kept us restless. That made us burdened. Reduce this thing. We will serve you. He said, okay, go and come back in three days. He went to the old men that were counselors to Solomon and said, what do you, ask, what do you want me to answer these people that say I should reduce my father's burden? They told him, saying, if you will hearken to these people and be their servant, serve them. Come down. Don't carry big manism upon your shoulder. Don't recognize the rank upon your shoulder when you are dealing with these people. Don't exalt yourself as a king when you are dealing with these people. Don't say, I am your pastor. Mm -mm, don't do that. When you are dealing with these people, be as their servant. Didn't Jesus say, I am among you as he that served? Be as a servant and speak good words to these people. Speak kind words to these people. Leader, your bodyguards, speak kind words to them. Gentle words to them. Don't deal with them as if you're dealing with animals. Come here. Where did you do this wrong? Ah, remember you're a Christian. Speak kind words. Deal gently as Boaz deal to his dealt with his servants that were in the field. Pastor, deal gently with your members. Deal gently. Serve them. Serve them. Sacrifice for them. Masters, you have some people under you. Deal kindly with them. This Kindly, kindly, your kindness that you are showing will pay you back a thousandfold. It will pay you back. They will respect you. They will honor you. They will bless you. They will exalt you because you have humbled yourself. They advise this king. This is what to do. This is you will now be creating a relationship of love. The proud man will come down. If, some, if you want to, when Jesus was born, laid in a manger, in the house of animals, which, and the door was not very high, the door was low. If anybody would go in to see the child, the person has to stoop low like this to enter, that brings down the proud man. That teaches humility. So come down so that you can destroy pride in your, in your organization. You can destroy pride in the church because who is coming to you, he's coming to a humble man, so you can't raise up his shoulder. He can't raise up his shoulder. So they advise him like that, and this is advice to you. It's a life of love. People will be happy to be in your presence. They will love you. You are their servant. And they will say, no, 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 no. You are not supposed to be my servant. Please, I am the, to be your servant. No, no, don't wash my feet. I will wash your feet. Don't worry, I will wash your feet. Jesus stooped down and washed the feet of the disciples. I say, if I whom you call master and lord have done this thing, go and do so to other people. You'll be spreading Christian virtues. So, master, servant. Master, deal in love and humility. Humility is a property of love. Humility is a property of love. Deal in humility with your servants. Mistress, 
you have maids with you girls that are serving you girls that are running errands for you they have their mistakes please when they make mistakes and you want to correct them don't go beyond the boundary she is also judging you as one that will give report about you 10 years to come and you are filling her with evil report and of course 10 years to come she will give report about you 15 years to come she will give report about you Gehazi was called to give report about Elisha and he gave report what did he say oh it's a great man in fact there was uh, a woman whose child died and Elisha came and prayed that woman that woman's child back to life as he was speaking oh see the woman and, and okay see the son see the son that died that Elisha brought back to life he witnessed it what they are witnessing in you they will give testimony about it either good testimony or bad testimony therefore deal carefully with your maids as those that shall give testimony about you so i've talked to you about pastor and members leader and the lead 